welcome. Uh, we are here with Kathleen Barnes. Uh, she has, uh, she's actually the, the co-director of the Front Room Gallery, an artist herself, um, and has shown with open source um, in 2012. And that was such a beautiful show that I want to share my screen really quickly to show you what that, oops, uh, what that show, show looked like. So um, yeah, this was, the show was called From the Woods. Right. And the gallery is this small, if you have not been to open source, it's a two car garage. And there was, um, the woods was bound together and crammed and, 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 and it was a full It was all materials that, was, that were collected from the Prospect Park because the open source is really close to the you know, public park there. So I went there and did like several different collections of the fallen branches. So none of these were like cut from the woods, that was a big part of the, that's a really nice image you have there of it, um, that one. Yeah, that's nice. Cause you can really see the, the form of it that I was using this idea of like suspension and um, compression to get this rise. So it, it wasn't like, you know, nailed to the wall or anything. That's all just the internal structure of the wood bound together. So we, did several collections and we did some, we did some like educational components with open source. Uh, we had some guests come out and talk about, uh, you know, different elements of nature in Prospect Park. Remember that? That was like really fun, right? I think Ethan Crenson came and uh, Heidi came out, you know, to talk about the botanicals and things. And um, it was a nice way to like engage with the community, talk about the locale to the park and then like physically bring outside nature inside right yeah no i agree but the installation by itself was also so beautiful the way it really kind of like um ended the space it was really yeah. cool. that was a fun one to build too right because it was like so tight and then you could really there was like you know the barrier between indoors and outdoors is like so close in the open source space right yeah, yeah. so um so i know it like you have been since working on similar projects, uh, but also different different projects. So just let us know what you're working on now. Yeah, sure. You know, I was thinking what I could show you guys, because um, I have the traveling landscapes that I could share the screen with, but also in, a, in addition to the that, um, oh, where's my folder here? I was thinking that I could show the um, some of the other installations I've done along that line. It's not the bound sticks, but um, let me get there. Because I had that installation at the Brandywine River Museum that I thought would be nice to share, right? An image. That's amazing. I, I agree. Yeah. That, that I, would I like can pull, that. I don't know how we do the screen share. Uh, you can share. I think it should it should work for you. I have it on here. Okay, so what do I have to do? In the bottom it says share screen. <laughs> it should be that easy, right? Uh, it's a it's a green bottom. Oh, I see it. Okay. <laughs> it's a green bottom. It's a green. <laughs> okay, wait, not that one. I want to do this one. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, does that work? Yeah, that works well. And then how do I go? Do I go to tools? How do I go to the full screen? I know all these things, it's like the technology, right? Okay, yeah. So does that work? Yeah. Yes. So this was an installation that I did uh, recently at the Brandywine River Museum. Um, Cause a lot of my work has to do with looking at sites in nature and dislocating them uh, and displacing them, which is kind of what I was doing with the bound sticks collecting actual physical material and like bringing it into the space at open source. Um, for this is like a reconstruction of a section of the river. And then this was in the atrium space in the Brandywine River Museum. So it was like, a, I think this was between the second and third floor. So you could walk underneath of it. So I made it look like the riverbed was actually scooped out. Um, you know, from the site and then put there. And I think that if the, there's, there, 
there and behind you can actually see like that green little the windows like that's the actual river is there and then my you know recreation of it was in the interior of the space so you have this kind of like weird you know you know mental experience of like you're looking at the whole thing almost from an aerial view but then you can look out and see the physical thing like out the window that's amazing too. and it had running water that went through so there was actual movement um of the water going through so just the engineering aspect of that was like compl complicated did this change a lot uh, during the the time of the exhibition uh, because there was actually a lot of sunlight coming up because it was the atrium there was an open like skylight area the water started to you know change color it actually started to uh go green in there so it was like algae buildup uh in it so but these are not live plants for the most part it's all artificial uh it's uh artificial foliage painted surface uh but a lot of the soil is actually soil collected from the riverbed itself and so that's the color that's what's so interesting about this one because it's like it looks so dark it looks like i don't know like almost like a black soil but that's how dark the soil was uh there at that site and so yeah wow so that's the that's like a the larger installation that I wanted to show. But then I ha I wanted to talk to about the traveling landscapes because I have some of them physically here I can talk about today. Uh, this is the this was the one that I did for the Arts for Trees. Uh -huh. um, and that was when they were doing that million tree project in New York City to plant a million trees. Um, and that was sponsored by TD Bank. And this is the piece I created for that uh project uh-huh so that was like uh it was produced as a physical piece and then they made a print of it that went up on all these banks like all over the city uh -huh. um like posters and stuff <laughs> for it so uh, is that is that now a mural up there that's a mirror yeah is it is are these plants in here now also most of them artificial or is there a few uh, uh, no, in this case, in this case, uh, that is artificial plants. So, but they're all they're all hand modified. You know, I, sometimes I buy artificial things and then I paint them and manipulate them to make them look more realistic and get to the scale that I want. For this, I'm using uh, actual soil embedded in like a resin uh, mm -hmm. to get that surface for it. And then it has the running water. Almost all of these have the running water for them. And then I use the light and then the mirror to reflect the light to give this, uh, uh, you know, recreation of uh, the look of like sunlight over them. So they're always presented partially open. And then that directs like the angle of the light, which is with the like synthesized uh, sunlight. Right. Them. Uh, and this one I use like a mealy uh, coconut fiber to get that kind of like, you know, loamy soil feel to it. Uh, and this is like the, a more mossy trunk. <laughs> <laughs> this one really traveled a lot. This one went to a lot of different shows. The last show that it went to was the um museum of contemporary art in uh krakow so that guy's really it's a world traveler you know it did a it did a couple of runs around the continental united states and that one overseas so i think that right now that one's actually in berlin uh-huh so, <laughs> it's not really gone pretty <laughs> far i call this one the sun seeker because it has like all these travel stickers there's like jamaica on there mexico and some other more like in my mind like kind of tropical locations but then the landscape is less tropical so it's kind of you know so how, how does it travel i mean this is just a technical question but do you you take the water obviously out most likely right yes and then um like do, does anything come apart or that it's really like that piece is like in there? I build them that they're fixed in place so they can actually they actually can close completely mm -hmm. um up so the 
but for the most part, the landscape doesn't out, you know, over, uh, overextend beyond the height of the interior of the case. Right. Um, and yeah, so they can just be closed up. I mean, there's packaging and padding, of course, that goes in there to like stabilize it. So the landscape's not like rolling around inside. Right. Uh, and then the, there's an the electric light component and a pump that needs to be wrapped separately. Um, and then they're pretty easy to assemble and deassemble. You just, now uh, it's really important, I realized to use uh, distilled water. So there's no, uh, nothing growing <laughs> right. in the water, you know, because uh, for some of these, so this is all live, uh, live plants. Uh -huh. and water so in this case it'd be perfect to use spring water you know because it has all these little organisms in it but um for the cases that have the artificial materials i always use the distilled water because then that's all you know it's purified mm -hmm. you know nothing it's like sometimes you want things to grow and sometimes you don't want <laughs> things to grow in it yeah it's good so. Good to know how, how it works, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I've been doing these now for, uh, God, almost like uh, 10 years. So there's a lot of engineering that's gone into them to kind of refine um, what it is that I'm creating and, and uh, what I'm referencing for them. This is a canyon trunk. So those are all these like miniature trees that I hand sculpted mm -hmm. in it um, with the uh, concrete side, painted concrete inside. Uh, this is an earlier case. And this thing was like super duper heavy, you know, cause it's like basically cast concrete in there. And it took me like months and months and months and months to build all these little trees inside there. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. That one was really quite the, quite the labor. So I just really love that, you know, it, you gotta be like curious in this whole, like the inside, uh, you know, that the way that you are just, um, that on most of the time they actually sit on the floor, right? Yeah. And most yeah. of them are half closed. So you have to be kind of curious and like, you know, to, to understand what's going on in there. And I, I think that's, that's something that I'm also very interested about those. Uh-huh. Yeah, the idea is like to invite investigation. Right. Right. Yeah. You know? Right. Uh, so this is like a newer one. I have that one actually here like sitting next to me. Um, so the, the earlier cases were really, you know, it's more about like actual travel cases that really show like actual wear, um, travel wear to them. And then the newer pieces, I'm looking at things that are more about like the preciousness of the the landscape and nature. So the, the cases I'm looking for now are much more ornate. Um, oh, here's, see, this is a little out of order, but uh, these is that also something I'm working with, you know, instead of getting people to bend down like too low in, in, or using a pedestal, that I'm using the closed cases uh -huh. to bring it up off of the floor uh, for it. So that's cool. So that's great. That, it's a beautiful one. I love that. It's really well, like this one I was like really playing with the um, all these like really great patterns that they use for like these travel cases, like the the artificial alligator skin, you know, and that like blue marble right. um, color for that Samsonite case. Mm. Um, exactly. Yeah, this was shown at the Bruce Museum in uh, Connecticut, mm -hmm. and then so yeah, there was like a miniature show that this was in. Well, that's not quite too miniature, <laughs> really. But the, I guess the smaller ones, miniaturization of nature. And then here's another stack. This was hard too. Now it's really hard to find these uh, complete cases of matching sets. Can you see that on your screen? Mm -hmm. The green, yeah. Yes, I can see that. Yes, it's, per it's perfect. That's a beautiful piece too, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> So are these land, landscapes um, are also in here now? I know like you often uh, mimic the lands, landscape that you, um, you're familiar with or you grew up in or something, or mm -hmm. like in the museum case, it was like the outside of it. But uh, are these also landscapes that are like taken kind of almost 
down to scale from outside or are there just more image, imaginative landscapes? It really depends on the piece because some of them are very specific to locations like the um, some of the some of the pieces are from places that I visited like that one long black case like that was a specific uh, location that I was recreating and some of them are more like an amalgamate amalgamation of uh, different places that I've gone to and visited. Um, so for the piece that I gave to the open source. Um, benefit that drawing because I do a lot of these drawings of uh, sites from the forest or that and that's the kind of help inform what the landscapes are going to look like inside mm -hmm. of these cases so I do a lot of these like visits and drawings to figure out the different conditions of what I want to create inside the cases mm -hmm. so it's the answer for that is really like yes and no. Some of them are very specific and some of them are really more imaginary. Right. It's a response in some ways to the, the exterior of the case and what I imagine, you know, that person was that was traveling and then what it, you know, what it means, you know. Uh, this is a newer piece that's, um, you know, that uh, <laughs> there's this idea of like the, the foe you know, like the fake and then like revealing some of the, the, the components of the illusion for it. So that's what I kind of like because it is like fantasy, you know, fantasy and it's like obviously fantasy. You're not gonna be fooled that that's like a, a lot, you know, that's really alive, but you can still get the idea that it's, uh, it's, in, it's an indication of like growth in there, right? Yes, the whole, case is also so amazing <laughs> yeah that red stripe and like the gold inside that gold i love it's like super reflective i know it's yeah. amazing it's such a cool piece yeah mm. yeah okay. so, uh, yes and yeah so these are like these larger installations that i've been doing too this was at volta um where i was almost the idea of uh, luggage holds and like what people bring with them, what they consider to be their precious cargo. And almost like an inspectors come through and like opened up the cases to see um, what, you know, what things were inside there. So I, for this, I invited the visitors to like walk around the full installation and kind of peek in to uh -huh. the cases. And then it's left up to the imagination as to what was in the closed cases there. Yeah. Yeah, this is also very cool. I, oh my God, I have never seen <laughs> So these are some of the ideas I'm kind of playing playing with more recently. So it's a little bit of a, um, a step away from the those traveling landscapes like that. This one's called assembly. So um, the more unusual cases and um, just kind of playing with the idea of uh, tree planting and like the parent tree and, the, and those kind of things. Like how does the forest grow? Um, and just, you know, <laughs> like how do different varieties of trees get to their location, you know, because a lot of travelers would bring their seeds and things, you know, back in the early days, maybe intentionally or unintentionally. Uh, and that's what we're looking at today. And a lot of the, you know, forests in the United States, it's, it's from these like migrant, you know, trees and plants that were brought over. Uh -huh. and so, yeah, this, yeah. Yeah. And then, so yeah, again, you know, playing with the, you know, the physical qualities of the cases. So this one, uh, the idea of like a cave-like structure, this is called Spelunker, you know. Uh, so I don't know if you can see so well in this photograph, but like there's the stalactites and stalagmites underneath and like this like watery kind of goo underneath to mimic the growth of those. And then it has the, uh, you know, the foliage on the top of the soil. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. I love this one. <laughs> it's such a weird case too. Like, you know, some of this stuff is just like fun to think about it's what like, on earth, like <laughs> what they carry in there. <laughs> I mean, there, there's so much um, hyper-realism, but then also, you know, like it's very, it, it, some of it seems really um, so, uh, fantasy right so yeah. it, it's it's really it's really it's really fun and great and also super interesting these 
Yeah, where do you find all of these cases? They are just so in, so so cool. <laughs> I'm really lucky because they, now that people know that I'm doing this, like they'll send me the cases, you know. And this is actually given to me by one of my uh, my family friends, Paul Rogerson, who is down in Baltimore, and uh, he's always on the lookout. And he's like, "Ooh, ooh I've got this really really good one for you." So yeah, this one is always the fun. And then it's a challenge to see what you know what the next you know, step is for it with the, how I can transform it into the sculpture. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's what, here I can stop this share. So I wanted to ask one more question about that other one, about that, uh, that looks a little bit also like a spaceship that- Oh, this one? Yeah. Wait, now I missed this I mean, you don't even have to go back to okay. it. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, I have it here, Monica. One moment. <laughs> I think it explains it all. I have it here. This I, one? See, that's what I, ex yeah, I wanted to ask you, how big is that one? And now I know because it's a lot smaller than I thought it is. Yeah, this is such a strange case, right? Oh my, look at that. Oh, I love to see that actually in, in that. You know, this is one that I couldn't, like, I couldn't resist this case and I was sitting, you know, for me thinking about it for a really long time to think about, okay, well, what is the right kind of statement about it? Because I love, I also just love these antique cases, really. And um, this one, I don't even know what the original use was. But, you know? I, mean, I think it must have been some sort of display case. But then in the context of what I'm doing sculpturally, um, what it would mean you know what it means to me and what i could do as far as like transforming it um like that was the big uh challenge for it yeah yeah mm -hmm. so. i i also like how you installed the light on top there right <laughs> but it's also hard to find those like old-fashioned um it's like a single it's like an old-fashioned bulb light that you actually screw in because now everything's led you know, so to go to the hit to to pair it correctly for me, as far as my yeah. in my mind, what the time period would be that I'm even, you know, <laughs> fantastically, you know, uh, referencing. It's like it has to be one of those like old bulbs, incandescent, I guess, you know, kind of bulbs. But you know, these like details are so cool about your work, I think, because you know, like your drawings, they're so detailed, but your sculptural work is also kind of like similarly. Yeah. oriented right like yeah, yeah. like so um perfectly re recreated or created right mm -hmm. for, for this specific um space that you create there that's really really cool so mm -hmm. and i see another one to the left of you oh yeah i wanted to show this one in person because it really has some cool movement to it so this is the one that I, yes. you know, I'm working on right now. <laughs> and so the thing is for me, is like really personal because it's like one of the, it's called like, these are caboodle cases. This case is a caboodle. And if you grew up in like the nineties, you know, like the caboodle was the thing that you had to have to put all of your glitter makeup and all your stuff in it because it has like all these really cool trays in it. And that's what I was really excited about. So for this one, let me see if I can open it in a way that everybody can see. Is that good? No, maybe like here. I, 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 back I, like this, you can I, see open it. I'm like down there, yeah. And so, so when you open it, it has like all the trays and then I've transformed all of the little trays and put these different landscapes inside there and for it. Um, and this one for me, I really feel like it's talking now, you know, again, about like isolation we're doing, like, like we're doing right now, like all these Zoom meetings and stuff that we're all in our different places, we're all in a different position, but like, then we're like, you know, we are kind of all together. It feels like, you know, like that, you know, um, it is for me, like kind of a real illustration of like what's happening, you know, in the world where, yeah, especially with the environment, the things that you do, like you affect everybody around you. So we are kind of all in it together and we share space and 
uh, even though we sometimes feel like we have our own space, it is, you know, all together, right? Right. Yeah, no, I mean, nature is the thing that actually really, I think, um, needs to be the, the topic right now, the main topic in general, because um, that is exactly the common, um, the common thread we have all throughout the world, right? Like, it's not, that's not something that's particular to uh, the US or um, the Middle East or whatever. It's like something that we all have to treasure. Exactly. Yeah, it's a global concern. Mm, exactly. Yeah. So that's a that's a big part of my work. It's you know protecting, and you know what is our role as far as you know earth dwellers. You know, it's to be respectful and to make sure that we're leaving it in a right. hopefully better, even better condition than we received it. Right. right? Yeah, no, I, I completely, I couldn't agree with you more. And I love that work. And I think it's just so, um, so beautiful. So how it's still so, um, you know, it really talks about this global problem that we are living in, but also it brings out the inv individual. Uh, right. Yeah. Cases and that's Cause everybody has their own, you know, everybody has their own connection to nature, whether they're even quite aware of it or not, you know, um, so if we're a little bit more aware of what our role is, you know, that that is really helpful right. to, you know, think about the impact that you make, whether it's positive or a negative right. impact. And I hope that people receive these as like a positive look at, you know, what we can do to protect the environment and nature. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I agree. And I hope you can show it. I hope they can travel the world. And yeah, many many different places. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to see them. You know, really go. You know, the, like where they go. It was in this show that was called the Baggage Claims, and like that was the traveling exhibition that was all about luggage, and um, like that went out, that went on a lot of different uh, museums. So it was fun to see the pieces set up in the new locations like that. Okay. So yeah. It's also so cool about them, I think the fact that they actually, um, you know, you can really close them up and send them, send them off in the world. Right, and send them on their way. <laughs> <laughs> very, very nice. Well, thank you, Kate. That was um, a pleasure and was really great to talk about it. Yeah, thanks so much. I really appreciate everything that Open Source is doing. I mean, you guys are really hardworking and um, it's nice to be a part of that community that you've really built to support the artists and the, you know, everybody to get a better understanding, you know, of what our role is, you know, in the community with the art 